Hello, we are starting now and um, <clears throat> we'll continue to talk about marriage counseling but first we answer some questions. Um, there are quite a number of them. First, um, if a man has more than one wife, which mostly happen in Africa, is this man qualified to be a pastor? According to 1 Timothy 3.2 and 3.12, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, and then 12, verse 12, let deacons be the husband of one wife, ruling the children and their own house as well. So uh, this would describe the description of the bishop and the deacon be, with, uh, be the husband of one wife. And uh, <coughs> now if, if a African had, a, had more than one wife before he was converted, in that situation, I think I'll let the African church to decide. Now, after he's converted then, uh, and he gets more than one wife, then he should not be a pastor. But if he had more than one wife before he was converted, that situation, I let the African church decide. Um, it's kind of tricky. Okay. Second question, if I have a wife and had never been introduced, I've never ex introduced myself to the parents of my wife in this marriage accepted before God. Now, then I want to find out why you're not ex uh, introduce yourself to your parents because they don't accept you or because of what reason. If uh, it's just, you know, you just never did, then you should go and introduce yourself to them. Uh, if they uh, reject you, if they don't want you, uh, if they you know, just don't want you be, to be the husband, then uh, it is your choice. Because the Bible doesn't say that it has to be an agreement of the parents for us to be married. That is not a requirement in the Bible. It's not a requirement that the parents has to agree to our marriage. In some situation, in some countries, the parents would have more power then the Bible describes, and then they don't allow some people to get married. For instance, they don't want someone to marry a Christian. Uh, then, uh, then we still are free to marry. We are not under, you know, the control of their parents. But if it's just that, you know, you have not built up the relationship, then you should go and build up the relationship with the, her parents. Okay. Third question. If I left my husband 10 years ago and we had been separate and the pastor tells me against my will that I should go back to him, what should I do? And, uh, okay, about this, there are a number of uh, questions. First, uh, why were you separate? And then, did your husband get another wife? And did you get another husband? So, all this... Uh, are questions unanswered. If your husband already has another wife, then you are free to go. If your husband doesn't have another wife and he is willing to be with you, <coughs> then, uh, then there should be counseling and to find out if you can be together. Now, and what is the reason that you want to separate from your husband? Is it because of some serious problem of his or is it that you just don't like him whatever reason you know so if it's uh, not because of adultery if it's something can be resolved then I think it's you know it's good to go back to him but if he doesn't want you then then you don't have to so it's uh, that's my suggestion but then um, you have to talk through this with your pastor Okay, number four question. As a pastor, I preach in a society where men were taught to be superior and therefore men mix all decisions in the family and women are left helpless. Is this healthy, surely, pastor? Well, certainly this is, this is not healthy because that's not what the Bible says. And the Bible says that, you know, that the husband loves the wife as Christ loves the church. So, uh, and also it says, you know, submit one to one uh, another. One, uh, 
submit one to another. So it, it doesn't mean that it just to, uh, totally just the wife submitting to the husband and the husband Okay, can you see me? <clears throat> can you see me? <clears throat> okay, because uh, um, Pastor Jeremiah said, have I started? I, uh, can you see me? Okay, okay. Now, did you hear my first questions? Uh, my, how I answered the first questions? Did you hear how I answered the first question, or did you just start to hear me? Okay. Every time when I say we we'll restart now, that means I'm starting. So. But did you hear my answer to the? Other questions? Okay, I will. I have already answered a few questions. Did you hear that? Please answer me. Yes or no? Just yes or no. Okay. Now, um, the first question again, I go back to the first question. If a man has more than one wife, and that happens in Africa, does this qualify, men qualify to be a pastor? 1 Timothy 3.2 and 3.12, it says that bishop must be blameless, the husband of one wife, and deacons be the husband of one wife. So according to the Bible, that pastor should only be the husband of one wife. Now, in a situation of Africa, when a man had more than one wife before he was converted, uh, how would it be? Then I would let the African churches to decide. At, um, now, for me, uh, for the good witness, I would say no. Uh, and then, but then if the African people can accept that, and then uh, the person is, is a good pastor, and, and he had the wives before he was converted, then I would say let him continue to be a pastor. Okay, and then number two question. I have a wife and have never been introduced, have never introduced myself to the parents of my wife. Is this marriage accepted before God? Okay, the condition of a marriage doesn't depend on the agreement of the parents. So I will ask you, uh, is it because you did not go to introduce yourself? Or is it that they reject you? If they reject you, um, then uh, you, you get married, you're still married. Because marriage doesn't depend on the agreement of the parents. But uh, it's because they reject you, then you should try to re uh, rebuild the relationship. Uh, and if he doesn't want to, they don't want to, you, you, you're still married. Okay, the third question. I left my husband 10 years ago, and we have been separated. And uh, a pastor tell me against my will that I should go back to him. What should I do? My answer is, if uh, you know the first, uh, why were you separate? Why did you separate from your husband at the in the first place? Is it because of adultery or some other reason? If it's be because of adultery, then you are free to go. If it's just because you just don't get along, and and also now does your husband have another wife. If he doesn't have another wife, then if he's willing to uh, marry you, then you should uh, seek counseling to see that you can both, you know, uh, relate together, relate well. Uh, so you, you should have counseling to find out whether you can uh, live together well and then, and then uh, stay together. Um, separate for 10 years not because of adultery it doesn't make a divorce okay the bible says that the only real reason for divorce is adultery 
Of course, I al already said that if if the husband continued to beat the wife seriously and could kill the wife, then the wife, I, I, you know, I think that the wife can file a divorce because she would be killed. And the situation is if the husband continues to steal all the money from the house and so the wife has no money, then I say that that is another reason for divorce. But other than that, I don't agree to divorce. They should have counseling to help them relate to uh, one to the other. Okay. Number four, as a pastor, I preach a society where men were taught to be superior and therefore men make all decisions in the family and women were, help, were left helpless. And this, is this healthy? Uh, the question, of course, is not healthy because the Bible says submit one to one another, uh, one to another. And um, the submission is not a absolute submission. Because the Bible says that husbands will love your wife as Christ loves the church. So the husband should love the wife and listen to the wife. It's not a, an absolute uh, submission. Like the wife has to do whatever he wants like a slave. That's not what the Bible describes. Okay, What the Bible describes is, is that a loving relationship. And then the when the wife, when the husband loves the wife, the wife should submit to the husband. At the same time, the husband should submit also to the wife. Okay, another question. I am in a marriage where the two families doesn't agree as a Christian. What should I do? What would I do? Will I call it off or what do I do? Uh, where the two families doesn't agree as a Christian. I don't understand the question. What do you mean doesn't agree as a Christian? As I said earlier, the marriage doesn't depend on two families. Of the families, it's a marriage of two persons. <clears throat> so if the two persons are married, they are married. Even the families disagree. Okay, so, um, so they're still married, even if the family doesn't agree. Okay. For example, my father-in-law doesn't agree with me because he doesn't want me to marry his daughter, what do I do? Then if, now, my question is, um, did you already marry his daughter? If you already married the daughter, then stay married. If you have not married the daughter, and if the daughter agrees to marry you, and then you, of course, have to move away from the father, and then you manage it, I don't see anything wrong with that. The Bible doesn't say you have to get the agreement of the parents. The parents is not our head. Uh, when we get married, that the uh, that a man will leave the the parents. They are they are uh, they are adults. So even if the father doesn't agree, uh, it doesn't mean you cannot marry. I was born in a family where people did not stay in a marriage. Am I supposed to give a sacrifice so that I can maintain the marriage? Now, to maintain a marriage is not to give a sacrifice. It is the Christian way. It is the Christian way. It's not a sacrifice. So we don't say we give a sacrifice and love God. It's we always love God. We always stay in marriage. Even though people don't stay in marriage, we stay in marriage. That is our Christian uh, testimony. There is a family who disagree in marriage, but the side of the lady has no problem, but the fa husband's side did not take the other family. Now, when the lady's side tried to bring union and all was in vain, they decided to take the boy and the girl, and the man's side was left outside. Is that okay? As I said, it's up to the 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 man and the woman, if they want to get married, they get, they get married. They don't have to listen to the parents. Of course, it's good to get the agreement of the parents, but if the parents disagree, they are still free to marry. The Bible doesn't say that we have to get the agreement of the parents. Okay? It looks like a lot of uh, the question is about the customs rather than counseling. It's not about how to build up a good 
marriage and also how to um, help you know ma uh, marriages that has problem to get healed now that is the topic it sounds like that you have you know many problems with the custom so uh, please understand that um, I know that there are different customs um, and and they don't follow God's way and then you have to use wisdom that you don't um, you don't want to fight with the family uh, but at the same time if that's God's will to get married then you you get married you don't have to follow the will of the parents but you try to have unity try to have a better relationship with them